Modern versions of AutoCAD, anything in the last decade or so, has a pretty good interface. But as you explore how it works, it's natural to want to customize it to meet your needs. Hi, I'm David. I'm an AutoCAD certified instructor, and since 2016, I've taught hundreds of people how to use AutoCAD. If you've taken any of my AutoCAD classes, chances are fantastic that you've been introduced to most of these. Whether you're watching this video as a refresher or are new to my classes, welcome. We're going to focus on 2D drafting today, and we'll be talking about advanced things like Lisp routines. Let's get started. I'm using AutoCAD 2022 for this video, but all the customizations will work with pretty much any version of AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT from 2015 up to the present, regardless of what year it is when you're watching this. When you first launch a clean AutoCAD installation, you're presented with a drafting and annotation environment. This is the 2D drafting environment, and it's a reasonable start, but let's see how we can make it better. My first rule for being successful with AutoCAD is something I reinforce dozens of times in my classes. Say it with me now, read, read the, the command, command line. line. By reading the command line, you can see what the program wants from you and what options you have. But right away, we can see something that the default installation does poorly. The default command line is a single bar at the bottom of the screen. This can cut off information about some commands, information that would be super helpful to know. For instance, when starting the fillet command, we can see that the command has begun and we can see our options, but we cannot see the options that the command currently has set. We have to drag the command line up in order to see that the radius is currently set to zero. Fixing this is easy. Exit the command and find the 10 dots on the left hand side of the command line. If you click your mouse on that and drag it around to the bottom of the screen, you'll get a gray outline. Then let go. Easy. With the command line docked, it automatically expands a bit and lets you see several lines at once. When we start the chamfer command, we can easily see that the current settings of the command, and this will make life much easier. AutoCAD is a vector graphics engine that uses equations to generate graphics, and those equations are based on coordinates. Not super important to know in the day-to-day -day use of it, but simply seeing what coordinate we're at can make weird things that happen easy to understand. Here we are in a blank drawing, and I want to draw something that's 10 units by 10 units. I start the rectangle command and set it to 10 by 10, and it's super tiny. It looks almost like nothing happened. Let's see what the problem was. Oh, I was zoomed way, way too far out. I would have known this was a problem before I even started if I could see my coordinates. Let's go down to the lower right hand side of the screen where you'll find three horizontal lines, which in turn let us turn on additional helpers in the status bar. You can see the coordinates option at the top of the list. By checking it, a checkbox appears and lets us know it should now be visible in the status bar and there it is. This will show the current X and Y position of the cursor. Great. And now we can easily see the problem. Instead of my cursor showing a reasonable value like 10 or 50, it shows the value of 1.0485 times 10 to the seventh. That's uh, 1.04 billion. No wonder I can't see something that's only 10 units long. This will also let you see if you're in a foot and inches drawing or some other more globally useful measurement instead. Nice. This little gray box is the navigation bar. It has commands like pan and zoom and orbit, things you might think are super useful. But here's the deal, all of these commands can be done with a mouse wheel alone. You don't need the commands to do that. In fact, the only time I use the navigation bar is when I'm trying to produce an animated 3D video of a product, which is not something I use daily. So just close it and save yourself the screen real estate. If you aren't sure how to use the mouse wheel to do these commands, here's a quick overview. Rolling the mouse wheel up will zoom in on where your pointer currently is. Rolling the mouse wheel down zooms out. If you click and hold the mouse wheel, it's a button two, you can pan. Double click the mouse to zoom extents or zoom all the way out. And if you hold the shift key while panning, you get the 3D orbit mode. 
easy. The ribbon provides quick access to almost all of your commands, but sometimes you're working on a smaller screen and the ribbon simply doesn't fit. This can make it more confusing than it needs to be, especially if you're in a command that squishes the ribbon when you don't expect it to. But don't fret, we can easily hide unused panel in a ribbon. This is the view panel. It's meant to make creating 2D documentation from 3D objects quick and easy. Definitely a valuable tool, but its inclusion in the Home tab is odd. First, because this is the 2D interface, it seems incongruent. But also because it's repeated in the Layout tab, the tab you generally go to already when you're working on sheets. So let's get rid of it. Making sure we're in the Home tab, right-click anywhere on the ribbon and choose Show Panels. Then uncheck the View option. Done. There are other panels you may wish to remove depending on how you personally use AutoCAD. In my case, I prefer the right-click menu for copy and paste options, so I hide the clipboard panel. I also really don't use groups in AutoCAD, so I hide that too. These last two are personal preference, and I don't think everyone needs to remove them, but if you're crammed for space, consider these as well. There are a few things more annoying than being in some other tab in the ribbon and realizing you're on the wrong layer. You have to go back to the Home tab, change your layer, go back to the tab you were on. Ugh. Let's make that easier. Back in the Home tab, right-click on the Layer Control drop-down and choose Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Now the Layer Control is also up in the Quick Access Toolbar, which means it's now available in every tab. Try it yourself, and I think you'll find it every bit as useful as I do. Just give yourself a day or two to get used to doing less work. When you first launch the Layer Manager palette, it's all kinds of messy. It's too small, the filters take up too much space if you aren't using them, and you can't read the columns. Fixing the size, of course, is easy. You just find the corners and drag them. Minimizing the filters is just as simple. Just click the double arrow. Finally, making the columns easy to read by right-clicking on one of the column headers. Choose Maximize All Columns, and now it's all legible. If you have two screens, drag that bad boy over to that screen, and you're done. But what if you only have one, or say you're a CAD trainer who uses Zoom a lot and can only show one screen? Then you can... By simply dragging the palettes by their header to one side or another, it'll show a gray rectangle when you get close to the edge, just like we did for the command line. After docking it, click the little arrow next to the X that would close the palette. This sets the palette to auto-hide, keeping it out of the way when you don't need it, while making it fast and easy to use when you do. You can dock the properties palette on the same side. Set it to auto-hide, and now you have two bars to choose from. Heck. Dock your block palette, and your XREF palette to the other side. Set them both to auto-hide, and now you'll never have to hunt for a palette again. We've made several changes to AutoCAD and are happy with them. But then we need to move to the 3D environment for a project. No biggie. But when we switch back to the 2D environment, well, crap. AutoCAD forgot all of your changes. Don't let this happen to you. You can save your interface changes to your own custom workspace. Click the gear icon down in the status bar and choose Save Current As. Give it a name. I'm going to name it after myself so I know who it belongs to and you're good to go. If you make more changes, don't forget to save it again. You can use the drop down to find your custom workspace now and you will be easily able to switch into and out of environments like a pro. As you get more and more experience with AutoCAD, you'll start to consider typing your commands instead of going all the way to the ribbon just to click it. Your mouse can be anywhere below the file tabs, and you simply start typing, saving you the trip. 
To learn what you need to type, hover over the command you'd like to type. Read what it says in the lower left and start typing. But do it slowly. The type command for line is L-I-N-E. But by the time you type letter L, it already shows that option in the autocomplete window. Maybe you want to use the polyline command instead. The type command for polyline is P-L-I-N-E. You type P and you see pan, so you add the letter L. And there it is. Just press enter or spacebar and you're all set. The shortened version of a command, the L's and PL's of AutoCAD, are called command line aliases. And most of these make sense. M for move, TR for trim, S for stretch, RO for rotate. Wait a minute. RO for rotate? Sure, it spells rotate, but take a look at your keyboard. R is over on the left, O is all the way over on the right. If you're using your right hand for your mouse and your left hand for the keyboard, that's quite a stretch. When R and T can also make complete sense for rotate, with the advantage of being neighbors, and thus a lot easier to type. While I'm complaining about aliases, why is circle C and copy is CO? I might draw 10 circles a day, but copy things 10 times a minute. This seems dumb. Don't even get me started on why I have to type DIM to make a dimension, but only type D to edit the dimension style. My styles are good, man. I might change them twice a year, and DIM is all over the keyboard. Maybe the AutoCAD developers use Dvorak. So let's change some of these. The most basic way to change your aliases is to edit a file called acad.pgp or acadlt.pgp. But good luck finding it. It's in a hidden directory that changes every version of AutoCAD, so you've got to be a huge AutoCAD nerd and Windows nerd to know where to look. Luckily, you have me. Go to the Manage tab in the ribbon and click Edit Aliases. Then click Edit Aliases again. This will locate and open your active PGP file. After you scroll down for about a week, you start to see how aliases are created. An alias, a comma, a bunch of spaces, a star, and the name of the command. You actually don't want to change it in this section. Instead, scroll all the way down to the bottom. At the bottom, you'll find a section, User Defined Aliases. Anything in this section will overwrite anything that was above it, so go nuts. Here you can see several items that I've added. RT for rotate, D for dimension, C for copy, and K for circle because I live near a gas station called Circle K and have a weird association with that letter and the word circle. This is not a sponsored video, but if Circle K wanted to send me coffee coupons, I wouldn't throw them away. When you edit your aliases in this way, you'll need to save and close the file. But they still won't work. You have to tell AutoCAD that you changed them. To do this, you could close and restart AutoCAD, or you could type the command R-E-I-N-I-T. Check the box next to PGP file, and OK. Done. Test out your awesome changes. If you have full-blown AutoCAD, then we can do it quite a bit easier. In the Express Tools tab, you'll find a command called Command Aliases. This launches the AutoCAD Alias Editor. Just click Add, type in the alias you'd like to use, find the command in the list below, and click OK. Sometimes, the alias editor window appears to go away after this. For some reason, it sometimes goes behind the AutoCAD window. Just find the keyboard icon in your Windows taskbar to bring it back front and center. Once you've done all your changes, when you click the OK command, it will write all your changes directly to the acad.pgp file in the correct place and reload it automatically. This is why you keep seeing all those use the alias editor to edit this file messages if you opened up the acad.pgp file earlier. Whatever, I'm an adult, I do what I want. If you share the same rebellious outlook and choose to edit the PGP file manually, just make sure you didn't type a hashtag or spell rotate wrong, and you'll be okay. Having used AutoCAD for three decades, I've seen a number of new tools. But back in my day, we didn't have any fancy pants right-click menu. Technically, we didn't have a mouse either. We had a digitizer, but that's beside the point. When we finally did get a mouse, right-click simply meant enter. And frankly, that was just the best. 
Using the keyboard one-handed means the enter key is all the way over there and is too hard when you want to be lazy or fast. Now, you can absolutely use the spacebar 95% of the time instead of enter, unless you're typing in angles, in which case you can't, but who uses angles? Oh right, everyone. But we can go back to the good old days of He-Man Underoos in the Options menu. In the User Preferences tab, you'll find a button called Right-Click Customization. Now, you can change all the options to repeat last command if you really want that 1993 experience. But I find just clicking on Turn On Time Sensitive Right Click to be a nice middle ground. A quick right click is now Enter, but if I want to use the right click menu, I hold the right click button for just a little bit longer. Here it's for a full quarter second. I can wait that long. There are hundreds of other customizations that you can make to AutoCAD, from making your own ribbon, tabs, and buttons to literally writing your own commands. There's no real limit to what you can do. Heck, in 1999, I modified AutoCAD to look like MicroStation for a client who had 200 MicroStation users and didn't want to train them all in AutoCAD. Fun times. But these are my go-to changes, the one that I have to have to be as productive as I can. At least the changes that don't involve Lisp routines. Did you find any of these useful? If so, press the like button so other AutoCAD users can find it too. Do you have any other changes that you'd like to make? I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Maybe I'll try them out and add them myself. Are you interested in my go-to Lisp routines? AutoCAD LT 2024 can finally use them too, so that's a video I'm currently putting together. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And of course, if you're interested in any of my AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, Civil 3D, 3DS Max, or SketchUp classes, find out more at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.